This is the third intro and outro that I've done for this. Uh... And this is the fourth time that I have shot the intro. Very quickly, this is what's going on. Rain. <laughs> I have to have that door open whether it's raining or not and then I get really anxious because I'm working against the time. Is it going to start raining? Is it not going to start raining? In fact, I did shoot it when it was raining. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of that right here. That was fun. Amelia oil, which is also an antioxidant. It doesn't feel oily, so don't freak out. So it, it, it's been very difficult. What happens is I get very, very scattered and very pressured, and I'm not very good at it, and it doesn't look good. This is going to look a little bit odd because I'm going to tell you about the foundation, the primer, and the powder of what? This is the SuQ kit. I got this on the Selfridges site and I think this is a great introduction to this whole deal. So in it we get primer, powder, this is the same powder that I bought recently I wanted to get the oil but when I received it it was the loose matte powder and I thought the oil was in this one, the powder oil, but it's the loose matte powder, more on that, and the cream foundation, which has been out for a while. I remember Alicia Archer doing a review on this, and I've just finally bit the bullet. Let's talk a little bit about the products, colors and all that kind of stuff, and then you'll see the rest of my intro talking about my skin type, and then we'll go into three different days of putting this on in different iterations. The first day, all three products. The second day, I skipped the primer and I did the foundation and I did the powder on half my face and I did my by Terry powder, which is my favorite powder, on the other half of my face. And then the third day, it pretty much was Sukyu foundation and by Terry powder. But let's first talk about the basics. What is it? It's a kit. On the back are the ingredients, and you might want to do a little screenshot because it's the only place I ever saw the ingredients. And you'll note that this label is on top of this printing. So I believe at one time this kit was the primer, the foundation, and the oil powder. Because I'm not that crazy, I know I saw it there on the Selfridges site. And the idea would be, this is for people who have drier skin. However, putting this loose matte powder in it kind of changes the game, and I think it makes it more wearable for more skin types. There are 23 colors in this foundation, and the way they are numbered, incredibly helpful. You have to do a lot of investigating to find all the information. SuQ is a Japanese brand. So you can buy this product in many Asian countries. You can get it, I believe, in Thailand, Taiwan, Japan, of course, and I can't remember what the other country was. Also, in Europe, you can get it in the UK and in France. There is no place to buy it in a brick and mortar here in the United States. Online, you have to go to the SuQ site. I've never tried it. Or you can go to Selridge's, which I do. That was a nice little segue, but let's go back to the colors. If your shade starts with a zero, it is a yellow warm color. If your shade starts with a one, it is a neutral color. And if your shade starts with a two, it is a rosy color, a cool color. I'm in color 115, and I think it's a smidge too light. It's pretty darn good for me for this time of year. The only site that I was able to find pictures of models is on the UK site. So the English site is just English speaking, as far as I can tell. It's not a US site. The UK site has pictures of models for each color, which is incredibly helpful. That's how I figured, yes, I think 115 will work for me. And the Selfridges doesn't have any pictures at all. They just, on all the sites, have a little dollop of what the color is. Not fantastic. They could use a little bit improvement. Sukyu is a high-end Japanese brand, in case you didn't know. Now, I'm going to put on the glasses and tell you a little bit about each product. The Treatment Serum Primer. To enhance the skin's glow, the primer covers it with a film 
of moisture, giving a perfect base for your foundation. With four added types of luxurious plant-based oil, our new primer brings even more glow, more life to Suku's signature foundation. It is uh, SPF 15, so PA+. Plus. I've talked about foundation and sunscreen, but now we'll talk about primers and sunscreen. Don't depend on this for your sunscreen protection. Again, ingredients, I don't know because this is way too small for me to read. This right here, uh, yeah, really tough. But here are the oils they were talking about. Safflower oil, apricot kernel oil, which is found in a lot of Asian skincare and makeup, and it's a very nice ingredient. Evening primrose oil and camellia oil. Camellia is green tea. It's an antioxidant. It's wonderful for you. So that's what this is. I will show you in my demonstration, I'll give you what my thoughts are as I'm putting it on. Let's talk about this foundation, which is a cream foundation. It is designed to deliver a natural looking finish. The cream foundation by Suku helps to replenish moisture levels, deliver radiance, and cover imperfections infused with 13 Japanese-based extracts, we're talking green tea and silk protein. The formula leaves skin smooth and hydrated while blending seamlessly and staying luminous throughout the day. And now, again, ingredients with glasses and this in sunlight, I could read that there is alcohol in this and it is about halfway down the ingredient list. There's also towel. Um, there's camellia, yes, I'm just not going to do the whole thing, you guys, because it's not, it's not that important. I didn't see anything that came out to me as, ooh, except for the alcohol, halfway down, which is better than the house labs, which is, I think, the fifth ingredient. And then the powder, I mean, it's powder. I didn't get the ingredients on the powder, sorry. <laughs> Now something really interesting about this is they are talking about all the different glow levels for this. They have a little triangle, kind of like perfume has a triangle. It has an opening, it has a middle, and it has the base, and that's what they're doing here for us, and I think it's a little bit interesting. I'm not wearing it today, by the way, but when we cut away to the rest of my intro, I am wearing it, but I'm working on another foundation today. So the top of this pyramid, it's when you first apply the foundation, fresh, sheer glow. The reflection oils on the surface are spread into the skin for a fresh glow that is moisture rich and translucent. They talk about oils a lot. It does not feel oily, so don't worry if you don't have dry skin. The middle is a radiant glow. After reflection oil vitalizes, yeah, tough word, I'm not going to try to say it right, and settles into the skin, the base ingredients, pearlescent pigment, mica, and something called glow liquid, and others in parentheses, begin to reflect light, creating an even radiant glow. And then the base, and I assume it's like perfume, the base is what hangs out forever with you. The sebum begins to mix properly with the glow liquid, increasing the transparency of the pigment. This produces a smooth, natural glow as if it were lit from within. So that's pretty interesting. So let's go on to the rest of my intro and what I'm saying as I'm putting on these products and how I discover them. And finally, before we get into it, you need to know what my skin type is because your skin type may be different and a lot of what I'm going to say may not make sense for you. My skin is dry, I'm 60 years old. I don't have dry, flaky bits, but it doesn't produce oils anymore. Just the teeniest bit, like right here, that's it. Not enough through my makeup is going to break up. I don't produce as much oil, I don't produce as much ceramides, hyaluronic acid, all the things naturally occurring in your skin, so I apply them on top of my face. For longevity, I really never have a problem where, oh my god, what happened? It all broke up, it all disappeared. It just doesn't happen on my skin. Sure, 
If I'm wearing my glasses, I will get rub off on just about everything. Or if I have a runny nose and I'm doing this, that's gonna rub off too. But if you watch Angie's videos and you see how things just break up and her nose doesn't have anything and her chin doesn't have anything, I don't have that problem. Probably because I don't have a lot of oils on my skin. And that's important for you to know. I do try to keep in mind other people's skin types and, and say, well, hey, I love this, but it might work for you if you're normal too. Just, you know, to open it up to everybody. And I think that's about it. Let's, let's go on with the primer first. I'm gonna take a little bit on my hand. Okay, kind of it looks like a gel-ish kind of thing. No, not. It, it's very lightweight. It doesn't feel creamy, but it's probably not really a gel, and it feels like it's going to leave me a luminous finish. Let's put this on. Gonna be chatty. That's 115. I think that's gonna be a good shade for me, but let's see. And I'm gonna do half with my fingers and then I'll do half with a brush or beauty blender. I'm undecided. Really pretty. And it just, it has a lot of slip, a lot of stretch. So this is really, really a good shade for me. Let's see what's going on. Looks like nothing on the skin. I had hoped it would work for me, and I think that it is color-wise. So now I'm going to do the other side with the Beauty Blender. I'm just going to do a little bit more because I was cleaning the uh, lid. This is super, super pretty, super good color. Sometimes the Asian brands, I have a hard time getting color with. Like the Clé de Peau, I have to do O20, and it's very peach on me. I don't feel like they have something that's super neutral, and I do feel like this is, in fact, really, really neutral. Pulling you in now, and let's take a look at what this looks like. I can feel that it's set up, and my question is, is this going to get tightening? And tightening means it's drying my skin. We're not going to powder quite yet. First we're going to go on with cream blush, so we can see how creams work with this. And the last time there was a sale at Nordstrom or Saks, I got another color in the Clay de Peau, and this is Cranberry. And this is hands down, you guys, my favorite cream formula. You don't see your fingerprints in it. It's not thick and creamy. It's almost a bit dry. Wow. This is super freaking pretty. Wow. The coverage is not full, but it's a good medium, I would say. And you saw how I built it without a problem. So I think if you like something that's kind of a sheer coverage, you'll like this. And if you want something a little bit more, again, builds like a dream. No problem here at all. Super, super nice. Super nice! Charlotte Tilbury. Just want to do a little bit and see how these two work together. Okay, no problem with that and it looks they look really, really nice together. And let's do a couple of comparison swatches and then we'll continue on and do some powder products. The House Labs I have in 160, it's not ideal, but it's totally workable. And there it is right there. And again, cloudy, the, the light today, not great. But I would say the House is a little bit lighter than this and I've mentioned Almost every time that I put on the house, I've mentioned it's a little too light for me. Workable, but a little bit too light. Now, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin in shade 4N, also very decent shade for me. So there's the Charlotte Tilbury there, and it looks, I don't know, in this light, 
It looks like it might be a little bit olive, or else this looks a little bit peach, the Prison Libre, from Givenchy. And this is a teeny bit pink-based, right there. I'm going on with the Rose Dentelle shade, limited edition, in Dior, no longer available. It was last year, but I love this shade, and let's just see. No pulling at all. This is really, really set up. It has a bit of a blurring effect. <sighs> wow, it's so pretty. No lie, so, so pretty. So I'm going in with this Merit Bronzer, and again, I don't like to put products like this directly on my face. I prefer to pick them up with something else. So I'm going to pick it up with the Beauty Blender. And this is in the color clay, which is flawless, seamless. <laughs> and let's do the powder now. Okay, so the powder is the same thing as the big one where there's a net and it's a little bit pink. I, I just didn't love this powder. It picks up on my brush very differently than the Viterate, which is what I'm used to. Do you see how it leaves a whiteness? It's not transparent to me. Like the Viterate, when I put that on, it doesn't impart any color. So this, to me, isn't 100% translucent. I don't like a powder that imparts color. Wow. Wow. I feel like my pores have disappeared. It's amazing. I still have sheen up here, so it hasn't really mattified me. It, it's blurred me. That's what it's done, but there's I'm not matte. I need to just put a little bit something on my eyes. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, nothing special. I just went on actually with my Sicily and filled out my brows, no mascara, nothing else. It was really about the foundation. It worked well with the creams. It worked well with the powder. I mean, this just set up. There was absolutely no drag at all, which is really, really interesting. I feel like my skin looks freaking poreless, especially where I put the powder on. But the powder didn't do much to knock down didn't mattify me a hundred percent. All right, now let's get into day two where I talk about how things went on day one and a different application and we'll get into the powder on this one. Let me go over day one. It looked so beautiful. I was so impressed and it looked beautiful all day long, which isn't a problem for me. Makeup doesn't break up on me. I really, really loved it. So today we're going to be doing just the foundation and the By Terry powder. So I'm not going to do the primer or their powder. I'm just really, really curious. So again, I think I'm just going to do fingers and you know, I'll get up and uh, get the brush from BK Beauty and do that on one side. It's working beautifully with my sunscreen. There is nothing incongruent. There's no balling or pilling. And I'm using the Isntree today, or Isntree. And again, it's, it feels like it's setting out right away. And that is, no doubt, the alcohol that helps it to set. I think you can see that this is such a really, really good color for me, at least this time of year. And it's not too yellow, it's not olive, it's Now I'm going to do the brush, but I'm not going to pick the foundation up with the brush. Again, I'm just going to, God, look at this coverage. Whew. I'm just going to pick some up, put it on the face, and then go in with the brush to blend. It just looks like nothing on the skin. And I think I put on a lot less on this side, so this would be your medium, your light coverage actually, if you just put a touch on, and this is more full coverage. I really don't see a difference at all. I think with this foundation, you can just apply how you like to apply. 
but I do want to build a little bit more here. Hmm. It looks insane. I'm going to scooch up and I'm going to zoom in now so you can see what this looks like on the skin. It looks like nothing. And actually, even though it's a cream, it kind of feels like nothing too. So pretty. So pretty. And it feels like it's setting up, but I'm not going to take that chance. I'm going to go on to concealer before I go on with powder. Well, yeah, there's no problems at all. Okay, this really, really does feel set. But shall we do just a cream, just for kicks? A cream blush. Let's go in with the Say Chili. So I'm not picking up the foundation with this application. Ta-da! Let's try the By Terry. This is the powder that I use the most. And I guess I'm a little fussy about powders. It doesn't feel drying on me. There it is picked up. So it has a sheerness to it as opposed to when I pick up this. It's almost like this one is a heavier powder. And you know what? I'm going to take a snappy right here. And then I'll pick up the other powder. And you'll see what I mean. Now, I feel like this is mattifying me a little bit more than the Suki powder, but I did use the primer when I used all three together. But there's the forehead. It's a nice sheen. And just like the Suki powder, my cheeks look poreless. I'm going to pull you in. Take a look at those cheeks. It doesn't feel drying. It's lovely. I'm going to show you how this works on my brush. Brush fairly clean, but I'm not going to pick up the same amount of powder. So that's how much powder I picked up. Knock off. And I still feel like this just picks up more and it's not as fine as the By Terry. That's my guess, but I don't know. We'll just put this down here. Okay, now let's go on to a powder blush. Let's just do this. Why not? No pull, no nothing. Now, I powdered right here, but there's really no pull over here either where I didn't powder. So this just sets up so nicely. I'm going in with the Westman Atelier and the 37 from Ruffer. So fine with the cream with a brush as opposed to cream with my fingers, which I did yesterday, I think. Here's so far what I have to say. One, it looks like nothing on the skin, much like my Reboot, my Givenchy Prism Libra Skin Caring Foundation, and my Dior Natural Nude Forever. None of those look like foundation on my skin, and neither does this. It looks so, so, so skin-like. Unlike those, this one sets up, and I think it's because of the alcohol, so that I can go in with powder really quickly. Usually I put on my foundation, and then I do my eyes for 15 minutes, and then I go back. And even when I do that, there's oftentimes a little bit of pull. But this feels like it's setting up, which is very, very interesting, and I really, really like that. It is a cream, right? But it doesn't really feel emollient. It doesn't feel like a moisturizer. So I think this might be good for skin types that are in the normal range. Maybe oily skins won't like it, I don't know. But if you're in the normal to dry, I think that you will. All right, I'll come back tomorrow with my third and final day and let you know how this wore. But so far, you guys, just like I said in yesterday's, <laughs> this is so promising. You guys, today is day three, and I'm kind of excited because it's the first day that it's been sunny rather than cloudy, and I can really see if this is a good color, like I think it is. So I've already done it with a primer underneath it and using this powder, and then I used it without the primer and used it with my By Terry powder, which I prefer. And I think I'm just going to do without the primer, without their powder, and wear it the way I would normally wear it. Again, I'm just going to pick a little bit up off the lid. A little bit does go a long way. 
and work it in with the finger, but I think you can work it in with a beauty blender if you want to, or a brush. I think I like going over with a brush or a beauty blender afterwards in case there are any streaks. And I feel that it's setting up already. So here it is. Initially I thought this is a hair too light for me, but now that we have sun, well, coming and going, but not the fully cloudy weather for the first two days, I think actually the shade is spot on. Spot on. I'm not getting full coverage the way that I applied it, so I'm just going to see if I can build. I'm just going to build on the cheeks and going in with a little brush because this is the Angie Hot and Flashy. I feel with my fingers I'm moving it around and I want it to be very specifically where I put it. I still think this is just beautiful. Bronzer. Okay, this sun is going in and out of the clouds. I scooched up a little bit. I did some powder to take down the shine. The shine was from my sunscreen. And as I put the powder on, my pores just disappear. So I don't think it matters if you use the Suku powder, which is just different. It's not as light as finely milled as mine. The pores just disappear. And it just feel like it doesn't look makeup-y. It looks like my skin. I have a little sheen here. Again, probably not from the foundation. Probably from my sunscreen. But it is so, so beautiful. But every time I put this on, I was looking forward to it. After the first day, which was a surprise, wow, this is stunning, couldn't wait to do it again. I had a couple of days off in between each one because of the weather, but it wore beautifully. I continued to do my hiking with Gracie in the rain and, uh, you know, use an umbrella or uh, a hoodie kind of a thing. And it stood up well to that as well. I'm just kind of in love with this. This is the fifth time that I've shot my outro because my car filled up. And it was such a good outro. Okay, again, I'm wearing a different foundation, so there you go. Fingers crossed, I'm going to cover everything I need to cover. Let's start with the primer. The primer is lovely. It has oils in it, but it doesn't feel oily. If you have not been here before, I generally, I don't use primer. And when I say generally, I mean I don't. I've tried many primers, but because my skin is dry and because I don't have big pores or scars or things I want to fill out, and because foundation lasts on me forever, I don't need it for anything. As primers go though, this is really lovely and I do like it. I don't need it. I will keep it here on my table to remind myself to wear it and I'll try it with other things. And if I find, hey, this is making a difference that I like, maybe I'll buy a bigger one. I just want you to be aware that as a person with drier skin, I don't find this to be, it's more moisturizing, it's more hydrating than moisturizing. So even though there's oils in it, I just don't get that oily, greasy, heavy feeling and it's something you shouldn't be concerned about if your skin is normal. Foundation. This foundation is stunning. They talk about a glow and it is. It is a glow from within. It is unlike other foundations that we've been seeing recently that is a little bit more shiny than glowing. There is a difference and yes, I do prep my skin differently my sunscreens tend to be super, super shiny, and when I sit down, I'm already shiny, but this one does give you that pearlized kind of look. Not in a Charlotte Tilbury pearlized look. It's not like, wow, you're, you're wearing a five pounds of mica on your face, but after you powder it, it really does have that alabaster kind of glow. Absolutely, it does diffuse things, as they say it does. So it might not cover all my redness, but instead of you seeing maybe this straight line of a broken capillary, you see this more of a 
diffused redness. Well, that's another thing. This builds quite beautifully. You get a solid medium out of it. I find that this does give you that lit from within kind of glow. Not shiny, not greasy. Not that I don't need to powder it, but it looks beautiful. And when you powder it, all your pores disappear. It is just stunning. And it doesn't have to be powdered with this. Now, this kit in particular, if you have skin that's on the oily side but not gusher like oil, you could probably use this kit and use this powder and be very, very comfortable. For me, I don't like this powder. I spoke about it on another video, with a Bredo video, and I spoke about it while I was putting it on. I much prefer the By Terry, which is my favorite powder. It is just very, very finely milled, doesn't impart any color, and I feel that this does change the tone of the skin slightly, where the By Terry does not at all. But this would be useful, I think, to people who have maybe more normal to oily skin. It does come as a kit, and as a kit, there's only two colors right now. I don't know how many colors they made of this, and maybe they're sold out. I'm lucky. 115 really works well for me. I just saw one other color. But of these three products, the one that I would want to buy in full size, 100% is this. Every day that I knew I was going to shoot this, weather permitting, I couldn't wait. Like that Christmas morning feeling you get as a kid. Ooh, yay, I get to do this. That's how I felt about this. The longevity on me, I mentioned earlier, foundations last for a long time on me. And I remember looking in the mirror at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, thinking, that skin looks pretty darn nice still. It wears beautifully. My sweet girl. And... I hope that I've been able to conclude everything very well. Not drying, but not greasy. When they say moisturizing, I think what they really mean is it's more hydrating. Because while it's a cream, it doesn't have that slippy, kind of greasy, heavy emollient to it. So that's going to wrap it up for me, you guys. I want to thank you for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you come back again. This is, by the way, why I say the same thing every day, because I start to just yak and yak and yak, in case you were wondering. Until we meet again, be safe and smart, and I'm wishing you good health.